and welcome back to the Six Degrees Podcast for Episode 4. My name is Zachary Lefebvre, and I'm your host. Thank you for joining me as I set out to have conversations with a variety of people, including musicians, small business owners, digital artists, creatives, and regular folk that all have inspiring stories and journeys. I'm really excited about the process of figuring out the podcast format and learning more about the creative people in my circle. Every episode, I'm trying to level up, and I really appreciate the support, and I hope you enjoy the conversations I have with each guest. In my six degrees, I know there are tons of first-class humans, and I figured it would be a great way to tap into the network, hear stories from all these talented individuals, and talk about the big plays that they are making. The main goal of the podcast is to connect people. Whether it be working together or just connecting with sentiments on the pod, I aim to fill these segments with fun and lighthearted conversations while diving deeper into our guests' minds. And this week on the Six Degrees Creative Podcast, we have Guy Clearwater. Guy is an extremely talented musician, producer, flow artist, and all-around genuine human being. Welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time to speak with me today, Guy. We can just hop right into it. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Uh, It's so good to see you. Uh, I'm glad that we get to reconnect over video. Um, I don't remember the last time we were able to festival together, but I just have so many fond memories of hanging with you. Uh, and it's been, it's been a fun ride with our friendship. We've done so many cool things that we'll be able to hop into later. Um, but I do kind of want to just take it back to where we cross paths. Um, I'm pretty sure it was at a festival in Arizona, either Phoenix lights or gold rush. And I just remember you being such a positive and welcoming person. Uh, then we randomly reconnected at Snow Globe. Uh, I think it was the first day I just walked into the festival gates and I saw you and Josh hanging right by like the um, the, the MTV lounge or something. Uh, and it was just so funny to see a familiar face in, in the middle of the snow. Um, but can you speak more to how you found festivals, live music, and how they've Im- impacted you? Absolutely, yeah. And I think... Uh... I think it was definitely Phoenix Lights that we that we first first crossed paths for sure, uh, and then it just kept kept seeing each other. At, I think it was Snow Globe. We've been to Cross probably like yeah. five times. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, the fe- festivals definitely introduced me to a lot of just yeah, like you said, awesome, genuine human beings, um, creative people, you know, people that I resonate, get along with, that I still am in touch with you know, um, and we'll see from time to time around the world, different festivals, different, different places. Um, so it's been a, a, an amazing source of, yeah, friendship and just, yeah, good, good vibe people, you know. And how would, has there been any festival that like you've left super inspired when kind of like returning something that maybe has like impacted your, uh, trajectory of like creative vision for your music project? Um, or, you know, as far impacting your sound or anything like that? Yeah, I don't, I, I can't remember if there's been a specific one festival that, uh, that I left, like, you know, more inspired than other ones. I'm sure there were, um, but I usually, usually I, I pick the festivals that I, that I know that I'm going to, you know, be inspired by the music there. And I think every festival and every artist that I see at a festival, you know, like when I, when I when I listen to music at a festival, being a musician and being a producer, I'm constantly in like analyze mode a lot of the time. So when I'm hearing a song, I'm like I'm picturing Ableton, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've I've learned how to turn it off so I can you know just dance and enjoy the music also. But uh, a lot of it, especially if it's you know an artist that I, you know, am inspired by musically. I, I will spend a solid amount of the time just either your eyes closed or just yeah visualizing how how their Ableton file looks, how they're how they're stringing together, you know, creating a set whether that's a live set or a DJ set. Um, live sets are more my thing, so I I'm, I'm more attentive to those ones. Um, I know that whenever I've seen Zoo play live, that always leaves me very inspired because it's you know a similar sort of a dark, groovy sound, but he brings like live guitar and live drummer and a live saxophone player. Um, Monolink, I love live just because he does everything on the fly. He doesn't use decks. He's playing guitar. He's singing, um, making 
making sections in the middle of songs to just talk to the audience and you know so those are those have been some of the most probably inspiring acts that i've seen over the years yeah i agree honestly i um i really love monolink and been heavily into like that melodic kind of genre but it's been really cool to see zoo too um like how he kind of started as maybe he was always in the in the studio with um i think it's ronnie and aaron the saxophonist and guitar player um but the way that he's been able to uh include them in the live show and then now having like a drummer and everything uh it's really cool to see how that's progressed and uh i definitely know that you lean more live so it's it just even hearing that those are people that you're inspired by i can only imagine like the the visions that you have for your project moving forward it's cool i, I remember seeing uh, <laughs> zoo at uh was it lightning in a bottle last year um and this was I'm not sure if this was like a like a technical fluke at the very end of the set, but uh, the when everything finished finished, uh, there was a couple uh, clicks of like the Ableton metronome that came through the like the live, the, the big speakers, and I recognized it because it's a very uh, very you know recognizable click mm -hmm. sound, <laughs> which. Which, which just showed me that they're probably using somehow, I mean, this was the inspiring part, they're using, they're all staying in sync. D Zoo is DJing, but he's sending a click track through Ableton to his drummer so that he can, the drummer can be on beat. Um, so it was, it was cool, to, cool to sort of get a little bit of a glimpse of like, you know, even though I wasn't behind the scenes doing any of that, I could still hear that, oh, they're, they're running Ableton. They're doing Ableton Live. And he's DJing, so they, they had a way of, of uh, connecting them together, which was just, yeah, showed how it, it's live. Yeah, you know, which is yeah, cool. that, that is super cool. And I think, you know, for, you know, general people, attendees, even though I'm super passionate about music, I don't necessarily, um, you know, know all the things that go on behind the scenes. So that is just a super interesting um, factor that goes into to hearing um, that it's an actual live set. Uh, I, I kind of like the sentiment that you kind of brought up in like having to like turn off your brain at a festival from being like so in tune with the music that you're mapping it out. I kind of get the same feeling sometimes like when I'm I don't have my camera with me at a festival or something like I'm always kind of just looking at angles and like seeing yeah. like oh man the lights coming through that tree in a certain way. Um, and I wonder how do you kind of like, is it just kind of like focusing on the music for you or how do you kind of, uh, I mean, it's obviously beneficial to kind of be in that, in that zone, you know, for your artistic, you know, to, to see how you might use, um, certain elements from the, from the set that you're seeing, but how do you like turn it off and like, kind of just enjoy what is a, how, do, what is a way that you've gone about that? A, a nice like balance of the two mm -hmm. um where i can i can i can let loose a little bit but still be sort of integrating what i'm hearing to how i'm feeling and trying to like i don't know remember what it feels like listening to it so that i can take those feelings and try to like put myself back in that zone when i'm making music um, so there's sometimes when I'm like strictly, you know, just, just focused on like, okay, <laughs> what are the hi-hats doing? You know, and like <laughs> really honing into like certain, certain instruments in the track. Um, of course there's certain times where I'm, you know, talking to someone, so I'm not paying attention. And I think there's, you know, that, that sweet spot for me, I think is not being totally mindless with it, but, 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 you know, learning a little bit as I'm listening, but also feeling and dancing and sort of, yeah, it's sort of a, it's not really a, I don't really try to turn it off, off too much mm -hmm. because I, I enjoy the, that, that's the, that's part of it that's engaging for me is not just, oh, this song sounds cool, but it's like, why does it sound cool? And that is what is entertaining for me a lot of the time. Not just that, a song has oh this song is sick like what does that you know that doesn't mean you know <laughs> to mm -hmm. some people yeah oh this song is sick or this song slaps or this song you know words that you know 
you have you know a feeling, but like there's not a specific uh, people. If, if someone says that, they might not know why they're saying that. Mm -hmm. So I like to try to find like yeah, this you know, this base is dirty or grimy or whatever, and then trying to like imagine what that looks like if I was to recreate that or a different version that's more my my sound aligned or something like that you know yeah i think that's super cool and i really just admire um you know talking to people that understand music on a much deeper level because it's just so interesting the way that you know people like yourself connect with music and i'm sure it goes back quite a bit um you know to where you've developed your music and how you've just kind of honed in your skills and that's kind of something i'd love to dive deeper into is like how you got involved with music i know it like runs deep in your family i'm wondering like what are some of your earliest memories of falling in love with music and how has that developed over time absolutely yeah um i think my very first music lesson was when i was six years old from uh, my mom who is a professional violin player um, she taught me and my sister when i was six and she was four um, to, I think I, we learned for about, I learned for about six years, I think, and then I took a break. Um, so it was violin almost every single day for a year. And then I think when I was seven or eight, um, uh, one of her sisters, so my aunt, um, gave me a piano lesson in this new methodology, methodology that she trained to learn or learn to train to teach. Um, and I was her guinea pig student. She taught me the very first song and the very first level of this new curriculum that, that she was starting. Um, and I don't remember that a ton because it was I was very young. Um, but I remember I do remember picking it up quickly. I remember picking up the piano very quickly. Um, and I think maybe two or two or three years into that maybe less, maybe a year and a half um, of piano. I'm trying to remember. I, I remember certain times being very young, like uh, learning a song, uh, like really quick in like a song that might on the violin might take, might, you know, normally take a student, you know, a couple of weeks when I learned, like I learned in a day. And I remember being very like, like this is a like I have like a superpower almost like I have this cool like ability to ingest and remember and you know learn music, um, and I think you know learning learning you know violin and piano sort of simultaneously also I was I've just been surrounded by music basically my whole life now I never stopped playing piano I still play violin uh, a little bit <clears throat> I still have my violin. I play piano a lot more though, um, but yeah, so it came from mom, uh, violin, and uh, our dad also uh, writes songs and plays guitar and is the more like um, improvising and just make it up as you go, where mom was like the classical background. So me and my sister both got, a, I, I think, a sort of a perfect storm of, of two, two music worlds sort of meshed together. Um, and so my sister and I have both, uh, we both do music, that's, that's our life. Um, and it's interesting to see where we've both, we've, you know, had the same, same parents, um, same ish education, although I played a lot more piano, she played a lot more violin. Um, and we've both, you know, found our own paths in music, completely different sounds, <laughs> but, you know, just following, you know, a sound that we liked. Um, which is, which is, I think, super, super cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wonder what it is, you know, was it just, I mean, I know you said that you connected with piano, but also I've heard people talk about piano and like the way that it's set out, you know, with like seeing the keys all right in front of you rather than having to, you know, climb up and down the fretboard to f find the notes. I'm wondering, like, can you speak more to that? Like, was that, is it, was it like a personal connection between you and the piano or was like the layout of the instrument something that kind of like, you think made picking it up and learning it a little bit um, easier, I guess. And I say easier, question. not in like a... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. So, um, yeah, because a, a violin 
it has a it's not a fretboard there's no frets but it's a fingerboard so mm -hmm. you're for, with violin every or with violin cello all, all the fretless string instruments you are you tune every single note that you play so unlike a, unlike a guitar you can you play frets and so you can't really play a wrong note you can play the wrong note for the song you're playing but you can't play like a out of tune note unless your guitar is out of tune whereas a violin you have to you're tuning you're using your ear every single time that you put your finger down um so so that that's definitely <laughs> i think a lot harder than like playing a guitar or playing a piano so i think when i learned piano i don't know um i think i don't know what it, it was i mean i was very young and i don't it wasn't really, I don't think I was like, oh, I want to learn piano. I think it was just, it was an option that was presented to me. Like my aunt came, hey, can I just show you a song real quick? I want to try this, you know, teaching method. And I think I just sort of was at the right time at the right place maybe um, and enjoyed it. She taught me well and it was easy and it was fun. And so that led to, you know, her showing me the next song and the next song. And I just sort of kept, I guess, snowball effect i haven't really thought about that actually since <laughs> that's interesting um because i don't i don't i don't think i don't think i like chose to learn piano i didn't ask my parents to, to learn piano i asked for violin oh actually my sister did my sister when she was not even four <laughs> wanted violin lessons <laughs> and I think my mom said, okay, when you're four, yes. And then when she started learning, I was like, oh, that, that sounds cool. I'm going to, I want violin because my sister had just started learning violin. So I chose that one. And then, yeah, piano just was sort of presented to me, I guess. Um, and I've stuck with it. It's, it's been the, the, the longest, one of the longest things that, or, you know, that I've had for basically my whole entire life. Um, in terms of, yeah, the, the ease of playing a piano, it is, it is like the, it's the most, uh, it makes the most sense visually, I think. I think I take it for granted just because I know it so well. It's, it's so ingrained in me. Just, I, just, I just know how to, my, my fingers know it more than my eyes know it. <laughs> um, but I think to someone that, was, that wanted to learn music for the first time, I would say piano is an excellent choice because it's so visual and most humans are visual learners. I think all humans are visual learners. Um, and it's, it's the most, uh, versatile if you want to, you know, produce music, you know, all music today is recorded on a keyboard, you know, it's all produced using just, you know, a MIDI controller. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, very, very happy that it, <laughs> that it, that it found me in that way. You know? Yeah, I love that. I mean, a lot of life is just right time, right place. Right. Yep. And I honestly, I think it's so cool that um, you have a family that is so musically inclined and that you guys have been able to just pull inspiration from each other pretty much your whole whole lives. And it's even cooler that, um, you know, you, you work together with uh, your siblings or uh, your family. And that's kind of what I wanted to, to chat about more is that you just released a song with your cousin, Josh, who makes music as Laughing Matters called House of the Rising Sun. And I uh, just wanted to know what it was like creating this song with family and how it kind of stands against producing a song on your own. Yeah, oh, that's a cool story. So, so yeah, Josh is my oldest cousin on my mom's side. Um, he's 10 years older than me. He was also uh, one of my first piano teachers. Um, I think after I got, you know, proficient-ish, um, I have two older cousins who, who both played piano, who are amazing piano players that would, whenever we were, you know, in the same place with a piano, they would get, Hey guy, try this new technique or check out this new chord or whatever. And then, you know, months would go by and I'd see him again and I'd have, I'd have mastered that thing. And then they go, okay, now try this new thing. So Josh was, was one of those cousins that, that showed me a lot of just cool stuff that he learned, um, that he passed on to me. Um, and with House of the Rising Sun, how did this come about? He uh, he has a video, um, a, an awesome recording of him uh, performing this song live, playing piano and singing with, I believe, a harmonica player and a 
saxophone player or at least a harmonica player in someone else. Um, and it's all in, it's all live recording. So the mics are live, the camera, it's, and it's all one shot. So it's a continuous from start to finish, very slow, deep, emotional, um, with uh, that song, House of the Rising Sun. And so I, this was a little over a year ago, I had the idea to make a, like a house remix of the song, which is, which is interesting because the, the original, the one by the animals, it's not the original, but it's the one that's, that they made it popular, um, is sort of in like a, it has like a three feel, the one, two, three, four, it's or a, a six, eight, it has a sort of a swing rhythm to it, which is not house music, house is, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it was a fun, uh, fun project to take the chords and sort of layer them on top of a house beat that is this sort of slower 110 BPM that I like to make. Um, and then I was like, how cool would it be if Josh could be the one singing this? Cause he already, he loves the song. He, he's already made a video with the song. He was, you know, one of my first, you know, music inspirations as a kid. How cool would it be to have his voice on this track? Um, oh, he, he, he was also, I think, my first, like, music production teacher. Um, so it was a, it's a cool, um, a, really, a really sweet sort of, like, full circle moment that, you know, I've, we've, we've both been in music and both you know being creative and now let's let's come together and do a thing uh that's that's a song that we both like that we both love um yeah i remember him he, he was one of my first music production teachers for i guess for like electronic music i think my dad showed me how to use garage band when i was like 14 or something so i started doing like recording songs which i guess is producing um but josh was the first one when I when I discovered electronic music, I think he was already dabbling and making experimental electronic music also, and so uh, and knew a lot more about Logic, um, and so we would get together. I think every every couple of weeks when I was in high school, every two weeks or so, I'd go over his place for just we would spend, you know, from eight p.m. until like you know three in the morning, just like in logic like making a song you know hanging out so yeah the the house of the rising sun remix was a uh, is a really a really cool um yeah just just full full circle moment for for us with music i think which is i think why 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 i like it so much yeah that's super awesome i i love the fact that it kind of like just organically came to the release that it is today over like the span of like a year <laughs> and that he kind of had his own vision for his um you know for his rendition and just super cool that you were to come together both of you and then you kind of put your little spin on it uh it's a beautiful song and i really Thank enjoyed you. it Thank you. yeah it's groovy um i kind of want to talk about how you ventured down to tulum how long has it been um are you there now and, I'm currently in Tulum, yes. Yeah, heck yeah. How, how long um, have you been there? I started coming down uh, in the beginning of 2021. Yeah, 2021. Um, for a couple months at a time, um, which is the high season down here. Uh, I think the, the first year was like, it was, you know, it was that first like sort of post or post COVID year, it was, mm -hmm. you know, 2020, it happened. And then I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Everything, everything went to online. Um, I had already had some, um, uh, I teach piano. And so, uh, a lot of, I had, you know, half my students were in person when I was in LA and I had half that were, uh, that were online students that didn't live in LA. And when COVID happened, um, all of the in-person ones moved to online also. And so I was like, well, if I'm only, if I only have online students, like why, why stay in Los Angeles? I could go anywhere now. So I use that as an opportunity to 
uh, yeah, go you know live abroad for the first time uh, on my own. I've never, yeah, never lived abroad by myself. So this is the first uh, that or that one twenty that was you know three three years ago. Yeah, um, it was the first time that I came down here, and just was immediately inspired by the people here. It's it's such a it's such a creative buzzing there's a lot happening um a lot of a lot of you know wellness and spirituality and music and art and just so many so many um it's a it's a melting pot for you know people from all over the world come here and live here for these sort of like winter winter winter-ish months from like december to april through april i guess um and so i've i've really enjoyed you know, coming coming back each year and building a building an amazing community, meeting you know meeting awesome creative humans that live here. Um, so I have you know when when I when I come back, I always have I know that I have a group of friends here still that are going to come back, and so uh, even when I leave, you know it's a it's a good it gets really really hot in the summer here, and everyone sort of goes back to their other you know other corners of the world. <laughs> <laughs> for the summer um but and a lot of the people that i know that are here they they come back every single year and so it's been it's been super super fun to have this to come to come to every year um and just uh you know if i need to lock myself in my room in my room to make a bunch of music and you know have no distractions it's it's a nice place to be able to do that i think also since i've been here for uh, I guess three years now. Uh, the FOMO for you know the events that happen has sort of died down. So even if there's something happening that I want to go to, if there's something that if there's a project that I'm working on that I know I need to get done, um, I don't have any issue you know skipping it because I've been to it before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think probably when I first got here, it was like going to everything to you know test it out. And so now I know where things are, what they are. I know my favorite places to go out if I want to go dancing or going and listen to music. Um, so it's a good, I, I have a, a, a studio here set up um, that I can, I can just spend all day here, no distractions, you know, turn my phone off, you know, make music until, you know, I forget what time it is, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the, yeah, that, the beach is here. It's beautiful weather all the time. You can walk outside, you know, at night at 11 p.m. with a tank top and shorts, <laughs> you know, it's just, a, <laughs> it's lovely. It's, it's very nice. Yeah. And I imagine like, you know, like you said, like the ambiance, obviously like the people, the culture, um, but I'm wondering like, you know, when I think of Tulum and like the jungle vibes and the beach and certainly like the people, has that like manifested in some of the music that you're producing now? Like, are you taking some elements of like the jungle, maybe like the, the natural sounds or like how, do, how does the environment of Tulum kind of, um, yeah, manifest into your music currently? Yeah, yeah. So the, depending on where I go to hear music, you know, you'll hear different, different sounds. Like there's, there's an Ibiza crew that comes here, that comes to one place every Friday, or I think. Um, and that's a certain sound that you, you know, you know what you're going to get if you go to this place. <clears throat> um, there's a place called uh, Treehouse, which is one of my favorite places. It's it's relatively small. Um, I don't think there's ever more than more than a hundred people there, hundred fifty people there maybe. Uh, it's dim. It's in under this you know beautiful jungle canopy. Um, I'm actually I'm actually playing there on uh, Saturday, um, which is exciting. So so when I go to you know certain places where I like the vibe of the people there and the music there i will i can sort of when i'm making a song i can transport myself back to those those settings and those nights and sort of visualize the song that i'm making in that location so i can sort of you know you know if i was playing here what would i want to dance to and so i sort of make make the songs that I want to dance to in these certain places. Uh, and that's a fun, that's a really fun 
way of making music for me. Um, uh, and I, I love, I love the, I love like it's. I don't, I don't know if I would call it underground necessarily, but it's, 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 no, it's not like top. It's not mainstream. It's not. Um, it's a little bit. It's a little bit Afro house. It's a little bit, you know, Burning Man style music. It's a little bit of, just yeah, jungly, jungly sounds. I guess um, very organic acoustic type of drums sometimes um cool instruments that i don't know the name of sometimes <laughs> that you know i hear and it's like well that's a sounds like a world worldly instrument um so it's a i i like that part of the of the music here that sort of organic lush sound um i find that i i resonate I'm more with with those than you know like the main stage at EDC or something you know it's a little bit of a different 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 vibe um, yeah. and that's sort of you know I think how I how I see myself when I perform when I play um, is you know it's it's more intimate but it's it's vibey it's groovy you can you can see the magic happening and so that this when I play sets if I, I'll bring, you know, other, other friends, other artists, musicians, vocalists to play, to sort of sit in as I'm, as I'm, you know, playing. And it, it creates for me anyway. And I think it's the sort of uh, immersive effect of people, you know, people that are dancing are also just watching the magic be created in front of them. They're seeing the they're seeing all the buttons that I'm pushing and they're seeing the instruments that people are playing and the piano that I'm playing and it's all they're, they're part everyone is sort of part of this like creative moment um, mm -hmm. because every set is a little bit different and that's 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 why it's you know the cool thing with being live is every every set is a little bit different and special so I think I think people. I know when I go out to see a show and I see that it's like it's it's so cool for me to watch uh, watch the musicians just do the music thing and mm -hmm. you know put their brains together and put their feeling their heart into it and just sort of you know hear what comes out of that is so is so cool. Yeah, I love I love the way that you you've kind of brought it up I think twice already but the way that you just kind of visualize um, the environment um, while you're making it. And certainly as like an attendee can uh, attest to the way that it draws me, the way that the sets will draw me in more um, if if I have the opportunity to be close and up personal um, with the with the artist playing, you know, being able to see them like play the keys, how, how long they're sustaining it, you know, just like totally. watching them vibe and then you can kind of get into the vibe with them. It, it truly is kind of like a special creative moment and for an attendee it's just yeah it really really elevates my elevates my experience so that's super cool that you um appreciate that and take that into consideration i think it's um that I'm, i know it comes from just you know playing playing instruments my whole life you know and then discovering electronic music and then wanting to sort of bridge bridge you know combine those two things not not just DJ and play a pre-recorded song, but play a song that I've produced, but then, you know, have this element of like, not surprise, but, you know, element of this organic, this is, this is how it goes this time. And then the next time I play it, it goes a little bit differently, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's why I like to bring in, you know, different artists that play different instruments because that's it, bringing that human element that human creative magical element into a very like computery electronic sound, which, you know, a computer can do, you know, but how, you know, that's why I, you know, like, I like going to see a, a live set more than I sing a DJ set because, you know, DJ sets pushing buttons, which I know there's an art to creating a set of songs. There's totally an art to that. Um, but you know, for me, it's, I'm a musician. That's, you know, by, 
<laughs> my whole life I've just been playing instruments and so it's been beautiful to find a way to 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 bring those together in a way that also people are like oh that sounds cool like I like that sound I like how that fits together you know yeah absolutely and it's cool that you have like this music side of your brain that you're you know really tapped into but i got to imagine that it's also really cool to kind of like bring your productions to life uh visually um which i think is just super awesome and i actually had the opportunity to work with you on one of those projects uh your little fire dancer video um such an awesome experience um just so much great creative energy with you know just super talented uh, cinematographers and and it was just so cool to be a fly on the wall and you know just do my my part of flying my drone which I love to do but it was just so cool to see all these talented people the dancers like uh Laffrey and um Heather and like all these people that are just so so talented um it really opened my eyes to like what can be accomplished when you like bring so many talented individuals together um and I just want to, can you take me through the process of like how it went from being an idea in your head to like seeing it play out in the desert and like finally lighting that piano on fire? Like yeah. what, a, <laughs> what, what a cool like concept you had, what a team you put together. And I definitely want to just like learn more about like, yeah, how did it go from concept in your head to reality? Oh my gosh. Yes. And before I get into that, you say, you said you're a fly on the wall, dude, you got the, you by being a fly on the wall, you you capture some amazing photos, one of which ended up being the album cover. So give that to yourself. <laughs> some beautiful, beautiful still shots, man. Those were thank those you, were awesome. thank you. I wasn't and the coolest part was I didn't even think to ask you to do that. You were you were there and you saw an opportunity. You had a camera, you weren't flying your drone, and you're like, here's some magic. And <laughs> it's so I beautiful think, watching them do their thing. Like Yeah. And I think uh, everyone who was there that was part of the crew and even just people that were there to just to just to hang out and support everyone brought that energy which was what I think made it so so special um but okay so to, but to take it back let's see you said from from concept to yes okay <laughs> <laughs> so the song I mean from the very very beginning the song idea I actually, the, the hook for the song, you little fire dancer, came to me in a dream. Um, uh, and I, I <laughs> dream that I was at Burning Man playing, uh, playing a song on an art car, I think at sunrise or sunset. Um, but the song that I was playing, it doesn't exist because I was <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So I like woke up and I, th I went to my phone and recorded in into my voice notes all of the, the hook the, the you little fire dancer, the rhythm of the strings, the staccato strings, um, and the drums of the drop, all of those things I was able to remember and capture from my dream memory, I guess. Wow. And so late, and then later that day, I was able to go to the studio and, you know, record those things in and then sort of built the song from there. So that's how the song happened. Um, and, oh my gosh. The idea for the video, oh, oh, I guess it, it, it makes sense to say. So that song was the first, um, the first like song that I like released officially. That was my first like, here's a song that I wrote, you know. And because and I so I wanted it, I knew I wanted to do a music video, um, just because you know it'd be fun. <laughs> Let's see what that's like too. <laughs> and because it was so. Um, the song itself is very cinematic e sounding. Um, so I knew, I, you know, I was from the beginning of producing the song, I was, I was imagining, you know, where I was, where I dreamed of the song was Burning Man. So that, that setting was already sort of in my mind of like, okay, I want, you know, this is the, you know, this is where it's set. Um, the so Marlo, um, I've known I think my whole life. Um, she's a family, maybe most most of my life anyway. <clears throat> um, she's a, a close family friend, and I remember that she was the probably when I was like nine or ten or something. 
um, was the first person that I saw to ever uh, spin fire ploy. And um, she, she's an incredible dancer, but I didn't know that at the time. I just, I just knew that she was like, you know, the girl at the party that did the fire thing that one time, you know? Um, and so when I was thinking of, you know, trying to, to, to get to, you know, think of, you know, what, what dancers or, you know, I guess before that, you know, I guess I, I wanted dancers in the, in the film because it was sort of, it's a story of, you know, it's a, you know, boy and girl story song. So I knew I wanted some like dynamic, uh, you know, beautiful dancing. And so she was one of the ones that came to mind uh, to be to be uh, to to be one of the dancers, and her dance partner Ismail as well. And so I hit them up, and I was like, "Hey, this is the middle of. I think the song was done, but I think this was the middle middle of 2020, maybe. No, maybe beginning of. It might have been like March or April, because I think we filmed it in a few months later than that. So." It must have been like March or April. Um, and yeah, I, I called her up and I said, hey, like I have this idea. <laughs> I wrote a song. Would you want to dance in it? Um, and she was like, absolutely. Oh, I keep forgetting parts. The, <laughs> the piano on fire. Um, I forget how that came to be a thing. Um, <laughs> But I remember, oh, what was it? I mean, obviously it could because there's, you know, fire in, in the lyrics of the song in several parts. I think I just wanted to make it as, you know, crazy and cinematic as possible. <laughs> um, and so I, I went on, again, this must have been like, this is probably all around the same time, getting, getting the dancers, conceptualizing, talking to you, um, sort of gathering a team. Um, I went on uh, Facebook free and for sale, or Craigslist free and for sale, and there was a piano in, I think Santa Barbara, that was, uh, this lady was, you know, you know, moving out of her house and this piano hadn't been touched in probably, you know, two decades. So it was totally <laughs> a piece of crap piano. It was white, it was a white baby grand. And so I hit up my friend Jordan, I was like, hey, he has a truck. Are you down? You know, are you free? Like in a couple days, you want to go get this piano <laughs> from Santa Barbara, <laughs> um, and <laughs> bring it back down to LA. And so we went up and got the piano and the lady was, um, she was like, Oh, like, you know, we were, we sort of, we kind of weren't going to tell her what we were going to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then we, we ended up telling her and she, she was super cool. She was like, Oh, that, you know, if it's for art, like I, I want to see the video when it's all done. Like that's <laughs> so cool. Like, <laughs> um, I think it, if it was like a really nice piano, I would have, I wouldn't have done that, but it, yeah. was, it was, it was really needed a lot of work. And so, um, that was the piano on fire and then the drums on fire and the violin on fire sort of stemmed from that. <laughs> just, you know, try to light everything on fire, you know, grand finale of the music video, just light things on fire, you know, natural, natural course of action. <laughs> Um, so I think that might have been uh, one of the things that I pitched to you when I called you. I think mm -hmm. was like, "Hey, we're gonna light a piano on fire. Do you want to come film it with a drone?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely <laughs> remember you bringing that up pretty early in the conversation, and it really piqued my interest. <laughs> I think I think that is what got a lot of people on board. Actually, was the we're gonna we're gonna light a piano on fire in the middle of the desert. You want to come watch? <laughs> <laughs> You don't say no to stuff like um, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially especially in you know, this is like peak, you know, this is during quarantine or something. Or, you know, the, the very beginning of, of COVID. Um so it was it was super really, really amazing to to reach out to the creatives that I knew and a lot of them I was connected to through my sister. I think Laffrey I knew through Lucy. Um Heather I know through Lucy. Um um who else was there? Yeah, my cousin Josh was there. My dad showed up and surprised me um, with Lucy. Um, I think there was like 20 of us there. Mm-hmm. We camped yeah. for about like, a, like 36 hours that shoot was. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of just yeah planning with you and Laffrey and Heather, having these you know video calls and planning because we we knew we had sort of like one shot. Mm -hmm. we had one opportunity one day one sunset and one sunrise to like get yep. the shots we needed and so there's a lot of planning that went into it um and then yeah just the 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 magic that everyone brought on to i don't know we call it on set i guess mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> a little bit desert yeah. <laughs> um it was just so magical and everyone who was not part of the you know film crew or um you know, any of the filming or, you know, doing of the, doing of that, everyone that was just there to, you know, lend an extra hand and just to hang out, just, it made, it made everything just go so smoothly. And it was so, it was, it, I, I was, I was part of it. I was sort of co-directing it, even though Laffrey was directing it. Um, I was in it and I was, but also watching it when I wasn't in it mm -hmm. and, being there with everyone and being sort of the the one that got everyone there together was such an amazing feeling. And when I when I watch the when I watch the music video or like the behind the scenes video, um, it, t it takes me right back there of just that that magical moment when um, I think I think when it really hit me was at, I think the order that we filmed was we filmed in the, in the daytime the first day we filmed some of the piano shots, just me playing it, not on fire, and the drum shots. And then as it got to be sunset, we filmed uh, Marlo and Ismail. And I was not in that part. And I got to sort of, I remember running from recording on the, on the piano to watching them doing their choreographed dance. And just like being so, I guess, high on adrenaline and just like, it's happening and this vision that i had had for months before was now like i was i wasn't watching it i was in it i was like in the dream that i had i had yeah. created this world <laughs> so cool. and i was like currently like taking steps and walking around in this little world that i had created where every, you know, everyone that I knew was here to help and make magic together in this time that was so uncertain and sort of like depressing, you know, we were, let's, let's come together and make art in the desert, <laughs> you know? Um, so that was, it was such a, I mean, definitely the coolest thing that I did in 2020 was, was that for sure. <laughs> Yeah, just, um, yeah, there's, there's really no overstating just how magical of an experience um, it was, you know, I'm so much behind the scenes preparation on your guys's end, I, you know, went leaps and bounds on the day of since we were so constrained to, you know, the certain shots being at certain times, but it, it really pretty much went off with without a hitch. And yeah, I do just remember, you know, like, especially when I was, you know, in the moment there trying to capture the the some photos um you know clicking the shutter i was just like oh my god like this is so crazy <laughs> like we're see? actually here doing yeah this. being being in the air with the drone and just like flying around the dancer i was like oh my god this is such a yeah. cool thing to be a part of yeah. and uh, i don't think i'd ever seen like a uh like a director booth kind of it was so cool to have like the tvs there like right behind the scenes so we can see like what it looked like and it really just like i felt like part of such a you know such a professional and and big cool project it was just such a great experience for me but yeah just to see everything come together see everybody play together create together it was just a really kind of really illuminating experience yeah that was that was amazing that was really i wanted you know more, more of that in my life, please. Like that was... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're manifesting. I can't wait till, uh, I can't, can't wait to see what you dream up next. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's honestly so cool though. I mean, like the fact that you, you know, heard, heard, you know, some of these aspects of the song in a dream, we're able to go into the studio, you produce the song and then to have the dream literally come into fruition this kept building it, on itself yeah everything that everything that i that i you know dreamed and then created you know spawn the next idea and the next mm -hmm. idea until 
let's light a piano on fire, you know, like. <laughs> what a great, like, climax, too. Like, at sunrise, with the sun oh peeking God, over the mountains. Right. And, oh, my God. Um, it really just kind of, like, really a great cap for, um, you know, those 36 hours. It was so cool. Totally. Uh, and I, uh, the, another thing that just I reminded myself of was the, uh, again, just the way that, that, ev- that I found all the creative people that 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 were aligned with doing that doing this project the the last one uh that came into the picture was uh jared who edited the whole music video and this is this is a crazy i I, this is a great conversation from the beginning you talked about festivals and this just clicked to me uh so i (laughs) let's see we shot that in 2020. I think in 2019, I met this guy Jared at um, at the LA Burn Club, which is like a fire fire spinning club every Wednesday Wednesday night in Culver City. And I was new, and I you know he seemed kind of new, and so we sort of like or everyone you know it's very friendly. So I you know met this guy, uh, and we. We like said hi a couple weeks in a row, and then one of the weeks we we like exchanged. Um, he's like, "Oh, are you on Facebook?" And so we, I like went to search him on Facebook, and I was already friends with him. <laughs> and so I was like, "I was like that how like how how does that make sense?" Like I thought we just met because we both spin fire, right? And we figured it out that we had met at beyond wonderland in 2016 <laughs> which is another festival in la and so he was he was the last uh oh so okay that's jared as i was looking for we had all this amazing footage tons of it too much of it <laughs> um i was like well i'm not gonna i i'm not at all qualified to edit this. This is way, the, the footage is way too <laughs> uh, you know, professional. I'm not a video editor. We gotta find an editor. So I think it was a couple weeks or months of like trying to find someone that that was aligned with the style and you know what we wanted. And then I remember seeing on Facebook, uh, Jared had posted something about that he he was like, hey guys, check out this new um, uh, this new like trailer that I edited for this Netflix thing, and I was like, huh. <laughs> so I, I messaged him. I was like, dude, are you do you edit videos or are you a movie editor or whatever? He was like, yeah, that's that's like his job. Like he is a professional. He he has some he works for Netflix and a bunch of other you know big big edits. And I was like, so uh, <laughs> we filmed this music video. We lit a piano on fire. Would you have any interest in um, editing a music video? And it was it was perfectly aligned with what he wanted to do. He was like, I I love music videos. I don't get to do very many of them, so this would be a, like a total passion project for me. I would love doing it. He's also a musician, so he understands like music phrasing, mm-hmm. and so when from a musician standpoint when i when i watch the music video the music phrases are perfectly aligned with the like video phrases i didn't know that was a thing but the the phrases in the music line up with how he edited it which is amazing um so that was the last sort of piece of that of that whole project was you know finding this guy that i met at a festival (laughs) <laughs> that spins fire that like <laughs> it was just another one of those full full circle moments um so that's, that's crazy that we talked about festivals and then fire and then that another full circle video. moment right yes. here on the yes. six degree yes. podcast yes yes <laughs> you know, i i love that's that that ha- that's how the conversation went you know i love i love you know that's why i like these kind of conversational questions and you know like you know our conversations really great because like we do have kind of like a, a friendship history and like a, a history of working together so it's just really cool to kind of uh touch base and as you talk about it you know memories come back up and links and connections and it's just so cool i think people are gonna 
I think people are going to be pretty just like stoked listening to it and be like, holy cow, like I, I can connect with that because this happened in my life. And, um, you know, that's kind of part of the pod. And it makes me stoked that um, these these memories are kind of coming back up and we're able to to talk about them a little bit. Um, totally. And now we have, a, we have a cool piece of art that we have forever, you mm-hmm. know, that we came together to make that sort of a, a stamp in time. Yes. With all of us coming together to make this beautiful this beautiful thing. Wow. I love that. I'm so glad because I mean, I, I, I really appreciate the song. It's been a little bit since I've revisited the video, but I knew that I, that was something that I wanted to talk to you about because it was just like really kind of uh, really great to be a part of. And, and um, you know, everybody was working so hard um, on those days that I think I don't I don't I don't think I, you know, we got to dive into, you know, how it came to be. So um, yeah, that, yeah, I'm yeah. glad that we were able to revisit this. That was super cool. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> and if you're if you're listening, go check out the little fire dancer video so you can kind of put a, a video to the conversation here. Uh, maybe I'll link it. And um, but yeah, um, that, that's that's just amazing. I'm so stoked. Um, but kind of going back to one of your sentiments earlier, kind of when we were talking about Tulum, how you like to marry like the the Ableton logic DAW kind of side of things to like more your live elements and acoustic elements. Um, how do you kind of see the, the live, um, shows kind of developing for, for your project? My live shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's an ever evolving process. Um, I think I've, I finally this year, um, have got it pretty much down to the, the form and the controllers that I, that are the most, uh, efficient for doing what I want to do live, which is essentially just to break it down a little bit is just, um, playing, uh, the songs that I've produced that are exported without the live track. So if it's piano or if it's like live percussion, you know, those tracks are removed from the export so that they can be played live. And so I have all the, I have all, all my songs organized by key so that they you know sound nicely blended together um, and I've been experimenting uh, instead of just going from song to song to song to song as most DJ sets go um, is uh, you know letting a song play out and creating um, with with other live loops that are not part of that song creating a just an improvised uh, section but as long or as short as I want it to be whether I'm playing with a drummer or a vocalist or a guitar player or or I just want to you know talk for a second um, I will you know create these loops um, and grooves that that aren't that it's isn't it isn't part of the song but it sort of tailed off from the song and it allows me to have a little little break that is improvised and um, and, and that can be again as long or as short as I want it to be, you know, if I'm playing with a musician, it'll be, you know, we'll, we'll exchange, we'll exchange solos and then I'll, I'll hit the cue for the next track that, you know, it blends it seamlessly from there. So it's really allows me a lot of freedom within the, within the songs that I've, uh, produced to be able to create again, these sort of like one of a kind moments. Um, so that's, that's where the live show is at currently. Um, what I'm learning to do right now, which is a lot more, uh, <laughs> bigger learning curve on this one. And this is where I'm, I've been spending a lot of time lately is instead of exporting, um, the complete song file to play and then, you know, play piano over it. Instead of that, I'm exporting individual stems of every song and so when i go to play it it's not going to sound i mean it'll sound a little bit like the original song but it's just going to be a combination of all of the same elements much more live you know put together so i can for example i can take out the drums in Mm. the middle of the song or i can take out anything or put anything back in or add an effect to something that I mm-hmm. wouldn't be able to do if I was just playing the, the, the song 
yeah as as the song goes uh, and and also with that being able to extend a section or shrink mm -hmm. a section if i want to skip a part or i want to stay on um uh, you know the breakdown for twice or three times as longer to to have an improvisation with another musician um that's what excites me i think the most i think what the the, the setup that i have currently is a good like a little a halfway point to that where it's live enough where I'm not bored with what I'm playing you know mm -hmm. um, I'm still creating and playing live but it's it's not quite as uh, I still the song still plays as the song goes yeah um, I can't but I want to you know that's the next step is having the ability to basically control any aspect of the song while mm -hmm. the song's playing take out the drums put in the drums you know add sections that don't exist that's the that's that's what that that's the learning for me right now <laughs> yeah that's super cool and like with my limited knowledge i kind of like am envisioning what is it like the session mode if like mm -hmm. ableton where you that's have exactly you can, what it is you can like trigger in the squares yep. kind of build your beats like you said take something out yeah yep. i could i could you know there's 64 buttons on that thing so that's a lot of stems yep. i can yeah. imagine <laughs> that the, the preparation for it or i mean i'm sure they make even bigger ones too but uh, it, does, it does feel like a, like an airplane cockpit. It feels yeah. like there's just so many, there's so many knobs and faders. And I have mm -hmm. actually two controllers that do different things. I have one controller that's all for these like extra live loops. And then I have another controller that's for like the levels and effects of um, my, <laughs> my songs, my piano, my vocals, my other live instruments couple other things <laughs> you know so i have like two controllers plus keyboard plus laptop is my current current setup yeah well that's super exciting and um yeah i just i love that that's uh kind of where where what you where you're headed and um i know it's probably just a lot of work but i can imagine that just having the freedom to to really like jam your own pieces out um totally. it's, it's got to be just so fun especially with like other talented musicians like putting their creative energy into into your music is is that to be so cool live and how it how it, every iteration is different or every performance is different. Is different yeah exactly that's that's the beauty of it and that's that's what drives me to do you know that's that's what makes it not feel like work when i'm when i'm you know working on setting up a session um you know i, I get lost in it i just mm -hmm. it's a it's a i'm i'm in i'm in the project and i'm going in and tweaking things and you know fixing things and like you know making the this making making it more streamlined and it doesn't feel like work because it's it's in this pursuit of like i have the, the end goal of like or not the end but like the next step in mind of like when when this is done and this is fixed like i'll be able to do this and that excites me and so that's what pushes me to just like keep you know, I, I lose track of time so easily when mm -hmm. I'm when I'm in a session, when I'm in a project. Um, even if it's just you know something as you know mundane as like MIDI mapping, which is just you know connecting my controller knob to a specific parameter in Ableton, and and then like changing the values of you know how much does it turn it up or down mm -hmm. based on how much I'm turning it, and like how is that going to affect you know, how does that manifest when I'm playing? What does that sound like? Mm -hmm. Do I like, do I like that, that, that it's this knob and not this knob? And how can I make my board more organized so that I don't have to think very much when I'm, you know, adjusting things. I can just, you know, do it based on, well, that makes sense because they're all in the same place or anyway. Yeah, I could see how you, you just get into flow state, basically. It's a, you know, exactly and, and, a flow state. And it's really exactly. cool, you know, it's, like you said, like having having that uh, the vision of, of what's next kind of like inspires you, motivates you to keep going. Because I'm sure like, I mean, I was just editing a video and I, I had the vision of like, it, it's almost done. But yeah, I feel like just stuff that is so meticulous like that, you know, it's it could be easy to get overwhelmed or um you know kind of just like i'm going to take a little bit of a break but once you get into that flow state and you, you're connected with the vision that you have in your head it really kind of does like push you to the end goal and when you get there it's just another fire lit under you you're like oh yeah i did it let's go to the Absolutely. next thing yeah especially when when you know your software it's easy i think a, a big a big thing I, I know for for people that i've talked to that are just getting into making music uh 
even if they play music and even if they're pretty musical, if they're just getting into like the technical producey side of stuff, um, if they're not fluent with where things are, that's what deters them or that's what prevents mm -hmm. them from getting into that flow state. And so that, you know, then they get, then they get tired of like, oh, it's just a lot of like confusion. And mm -hmm. then that prevents the creativity from, from coming through, you know, mm -hmm. so being, being, you know, fluent in the software that you're using is huge because then it allows you to, you know, you have an idea and you're able to just, you know, exactly where to go to get it. Mm -hmm. There's not too much like searching and how do you do this? And, you know, yeah. this doesn't work. Why is this not working? You know, it's a lot of just you know, having a sound and knowing, having a sound in your head and knowing what to do to get that sound. You know, that's, and that's the, that's the fun part is like having the idea and then having it come out of the speakers after that's the biggest reward. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of, um, you know, I kind of wanted to, you kind of just like tapped into it a little bit, but, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that sentiment, but just like having been a musician all your life, producer as well. Um, what is like one little tidbit of information, you know, that you would, that you would give to your younger self? Um, to maybe make, um, you know, growing as an artist it could be just like the philosophy of being an artist, you know, not getting caught up in this or that, or maybe it could be more technical, like you just said, like um, learning to use the, the interfaces, um, but something you wish you, you would know, you would have known with the knowledge that you have now. As, as a musician? Yeah. To my, to my musician self as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I think practice more maybe yeah <laughs> i think i'm i'm finding myself doing practicey things that i easily could have done when i was younger that i'm doing now which is okay but i as i'm doing them i, I i'm having i have i often have the feeling of like oh god you should have done this when you were you know <laughs> 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, when you mm -hmm. had, you know, more time to do them before you were like an adult, adult, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, I think it all happened as it was supposed to. I think mm -hmm. the, 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 the non pressure around learning instruments is what allowed me and my sister to flourish as we did musically. Um, I know, you know, from, from, from teaching piano, um, you know, and I get a, a student, uh, an adult student, especially who, uh, you know, the, the classic story I hear is, you know, I, I took piano, I, I was forced to take piano when I was you know, eight or whatever, and I hated it. And my porn, my parents forced me to take piano, and I hated it, so I quit. I, I hear that so much um, when you know when adult students you know come and want to you know try again. That's the story that is <laughs> that is repeated. That's, you know, that's, that's all I hear from adults basically. Um, and so I, I'm really grateful for the way that our parents sort of just let us have music mm -hmm. and not, you know, forcing us to do anything with it, but just giving it to us as like a, as like a friend, yeah music can be your friend, you can have music. Um, and and I think, I think what also helped with that was, I think the fact that, that we got to a level of proficiency musically before I did anyway, before I hit like the, you know, the rebellious teenagers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you go, oh no, mom, I don't, I'm not practicing, you know, <laughs> but, but I didn't, and that never, I don't think that was really ever an issue for me because that was always my escape it was like, I'm going to go play piano for three hours. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't feel like doing something, I'm going to, you know, my way of being by myself and like, you know, it's going to be, I'm going to go make music because I, I can express myself and I feel good doing that. So I got to a, a level of proficiency before those years, which I think was also a, a key factor in just, you know, sustaining it and keeping it fun. Um, so yeah, I guess I could have practiced more. <laughs> um, but you know, the, the learn, the learning never stops. I'm, I'm still, yeah. I'm still learning. Um, I want, I want to, I want to take like jazz lessons now because I don't know how to play jazz piano. I know jazz chords, but I don't know like jazz theory and mm -hmm. stuff. So like, 
that's, I think uh, I'm going to sign myself up for, I'm going to find a jazz piano teacher because I want to, you know, I want to keep, keep getting better. Yeah. At all the things I do in learning, you know, so. I just said the learning never stops and never um, stops. that's why I'm, I'm, you know, super excited. I'm very inspired by a lot of podcasts that I listen to and yeah. um, it's been, it's been a learning process for me, you know, start to finish, just, you know, figuring out how to, to, I mean, I'm doing it out of a hotel room, but you know, every day time trying to step it up, you know, learning how to do little intros and, you know, get audio right. And, you know, it's just a fun process. So I totally Ooh, agree with that yeah. sentiment. You gotta, gotta continue learning. And I, I think for me too, like one thing that I've been thinking about is like, I really like, I do music, uh, like festival photography, but I really want to like learn studio photography. I see so many um, photographers that I admire and look up to and I'm inspired by um, take just really cool fo um, studio um, photos. And I feel like um, that'd be something really cool for me to learn. And I could do like, you know, portraits for like, um, um, what are they like press photos and stuff like that. So yeah, always learning and definitely looking, looking into that same sentiment for myself. That's um, cool. I remember also the, the, I'd heard probably on a podcast clip or something. <laughs> um, the idea of, uh, I forget who it was, but, but they said something like, you know, every, everyone should, should do a podcast just to do a podcast <laughs> to, to learn. Cause you'll learn about yourself yes. when you do a podcast, you'll see how you are when you record yourself, when you, when you like have a podcast, like how are you going to talk? Yes. And you learn, you learn so much about, about it by just hitting record and, and just going go do it go, yeah. now you're on, right uh -huh. um, and so when when i saw your um i think you put it on instagram or something you were looking mm -hmm. for people to have on your podcast i was like what a perfect uh <laughs> what a perfect little opportunity because like that's i've been wanting i've been i like i've been feeling the call to, to do one or maybe have my own or something but so this is a nice little a nice little, little intro to that so um, and I'm curious, like, how, how did you, what, what gave the, you the idea to, to start doing these podcasts? Um, so, I mean, I, yeah, I listen to like, I'm not sure if you're familiar with like hot ones on YouTube. Um, they eat like spicy wings and Sean Evans, like interviews yeah, these yeah, celebrities yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he has such great questions and I just love the format of that. It's not necessarily like a podcast podcast, but like the interview style kind of video or like that's live, but like, I just really, mm -hmm. um, connect with that and the way that he's able to, you know, like ask really deep questions. And they're always being like, that's a good question. How did you find out about that? Like, um, and it's just, there's just so much magic when you like are able to ask the right question or have the right follow up. Um, I listened to like Andrew Schultz, which is, you know, there, he's a comedian. So it kind of, mm -hmm. it's really funny. Also, it's just kind of like dudes talking, but like there, he has some really good guests on there too, where, um, they have just really great conversational pieces. Um, and so, yeah, like being on the road here with this contract, I'm not taking as many photos right now, but I still wanted to like be engaged with, um, you know, my, you know, my friends, the people that are following my photo journey, my creative journey. Um, my whole brand six degrees is based on like the six degrees of separation and how we're all connected through no more than six intermediaries. Um, so like, I just thought like the wow, six degrees, awesome. the six degrees podcast, you know, kind of just like, it just sounded right. You know, I wanted to bring my friends in. I wanted to use it as an opportunity to like Makes learn sense. more about them, yeah. um, learn more about their journey. And then, yeah, like hopefully when people listen to this, you know, maybe people are like, oh shoot, like I've always kind of want, like you gave people a little bit of tidbit of knowledge about what Tulum's like. Maybe people like, you know, maybe they'll reach out to you because they are looking for somebody to jam with down in Tulum. And like, that's kind oh. of like what I imagine with the Six Degrees podcast is like people connecting either through the sentiments or, you know, cause a lot of all my friends have, you know, this common thread of music or, you know, art or, you know, mm -hmm. just something. And so, um, yeah, it was more so just, I wanted to learn more about my friends and then in the end goal, if anybody ever connected on a project or, you know, in real life based on something that they heard through this podcast, I think that would be so cool. <laughs> That'd be epic. So yeah. super cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> You're the connector. I love yeah. That. yeah. Um, but, um, I've been super excited, episode four, and um, we're going to just keep this snowball growing, hopefully. Hell yeah, um, dude. 
But uh, as far as just wrapping up, like, is there anything else that you want to um, touch base on? Like what you might be working on in 2024? I know we already kind of covered a lot, but if there's any other things that you might want to mention, um, upcoming projects or yeah, know, anything sure. along those uh, lines? Something that I, I just finished, um, actually going back to the House of the Rising Sun, we, we played a um, like a release show party show event um, uh, back in January um, and the whole thing was recorded and uh, filmed and that's uh, the live set is up on YouTube you can just search for uh, Guy Clearwater I think live from Tulum um, and I'm performing this was super special we um, me and a percussion player Ben who I met here last year um, we met uh, I was gonna I was gonna play at this restaurant had a set and then he had a set after me. We didn't, we didn't know each other, but we, we both got to the venue. Um, and he is just a percussion player, that's all. Um, usually he plays with a DJ or he brings a song to jam along to, or songs to jam along to. Um, and I think for whatever reason, uh, he, he didn't have songs to play along to. So he was like, dude, like, would you wanna just do like a, like a collab set? Like a back-to-back -back set, and I was like, sure. Um, like, I, here's the kind of music that I do, and like, that's that's perfect. And so we we had met like 20 minutes prior. We set our stuff <laughs> up, and we're like, let's just see how it goes. Like, you know, what what's the worst that could happen? Because um, he's also he just you know drum per, uh, he plays like you know bongos and congas and stuff like that. So it's all just he's just feeling it. It's all mm -hmm. it's all improv. And so we. Yeah, well, I, I keep the very, the very first song, which has like like a three minute like build kind of. It's all just sort of like sort of jungly sounds and sort of you know nothing nothing uh, thumpy for like three minutes. And uh, I remember I had this memory uh, so vividly still of you know getting to that point in the first song, sort of like not sure what was going to happen yet. You know, um, it, it sounded kind of cool. It was all just you know quiet, you know, chill, just sounds, you know, and the, there's the buildup and the, <laughs> the, the kick drum came in the drop, uh, and this dude just went off, he just, <laughs> he just nailed it. And it, it, it blended so perfectly with the song that he had never heard before. He's just mm -hmm. going based on what I'm, I've produced this song. I'm playing it. He's just like, I'm going to play along with it, you know? And we just, we looked, we were playing sort of side by side and we just looked over at each other and we're just like, <laughs> dude, <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> and we played for like an hour and a half. Um, just un unbelievable. Um, so much fun. Um, and people, you know, people were like, you know, oh, like, where do you guys play? And we're like, we, we just met, <laughs> we literally <laughs> just met here. Um, so fast forward a little bit he uh i sent him some songs uh to for him to record some live percussion so on um a song that i put out called wish um back in november uh his drums his live uh bongos are on there or congas i forget which one um he's also on uh house of the rising sun he has the 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 the, the drum solo in the middle of the song that's him um, and then I ran into him again um, this year. We just like ran into each other in January. Um, hadn't seen him since last like February or something, March. Um, and we played a couple more shows and one of them was uh, the release show for uh, House of the Rising Sun. And we played at the same, the same venue, but instead of playing on the uh, the side and like playing to everyone, we set up facing each other in the middle between cool. these two trees. It was two trees and a sort of a, you know, it, it was a root, root, jungle y, like garden rooftop ish type thing. Uh, two trees were in the middle of the two trees facing each other. And so everyone is around us that's there dancing is can, can, can look from any angle, from behind me, from behind him. Um, and the, the guy that filmed it did an amazing job just capturing just that, that atmosphere of, of like everyone was 
like yeah, watching us just like me and him were just like eye to eye, mm-hmm. looking jamming with each other the whole time. We weren't like playing to people. We were like playing together, and everyone was sort of dancing, moving around us as we were playing. Um, so that was that was super special. Um, so yeah, yeah, that that live set is is on YouTube. Um, and in terms of uh, uh, the rest of 2024, I am uh, finishing uh, finishing up an EP um, of originals, original songs. Um, all of the I think all of the songs except for Little Fire Dancer and Kid for a Day, which were a while ago. <laughs> my my style have, has has evolved since then. Um, the last three have all been covers, and so what I'm working on now is is getting together, basically putting the final mixing touches on. I think six or seven songs um, that'll that'll be an EP of original songs and 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 I think to accompany that either mixed in or after will be another EP of just instrumentals that are all sort of this new sound that I've found that is sort of I don't know what I want to call it it's not down tempo but it's 110 beats a minute so it's slower than normal house music but it's still got that that groovy funky you know dancey <laughs> dancey danceability and uh so yeah that's what that's what i'm working on is yeah finishing those those songs um and then i'll release them you know every every month for the next you know year ish probably heck yeah man yeah. what um what a pleasure to catch up it was so so fun to to hear you know more about your story kind of you know dive deeper into the little fire dancer and just rehash that whole experience because it was, um, yeah, just really, really special. And like a little, like, yeah, like a little, like a blip in time that, that is totally. just so memorable totally. and super exciting to, to hear all the stuff that you're working on as far as the live set and, you know, connecting with, with other people that are on your same vibe and, and just jamming out there in Tulum. Uh, I hope that um, I either can go out there and visit you or whenever you're back in SoCal that we can reconnect. But I am just so grateful that you took the time to to be on episode four of the Six Degrees podcast. I think people are going to really enjoy uh, the conversation that we had. And um, yeah, just really thankful, man. What a what a what a fun, fun time to catch up. Super fun, man. I just, I've loved, loved being a part of this. Um, and yeah, I'll see you. I'll be, I'll be back in, in California in, in a month ish in the Bay area. So. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, right now I'm in Pismo slash San Luis Obispo, only a couple hours in the Bay area. And, um, every, every week's a little different. So I might even be moving closer to the Bay area. So yeah, keep me posted. And, um, sure yeah, man, again, just thank you so much for taking the time. Um, and, Thank you, bro. Um, can't wait to get this out. <laughs> Dude, you're the man. Alrighty, guy. Take it easy. Have a good rest of your day. See you, man. You Bye. too, man.